Welcome back. It's been a minute. I promise it's worth the wait. Although this video is focused on decanting your P2 pint of brew into a U-Flow keg under pressure and therefore with absolutely no oxygen in the mix, this setup can just as easily be adapted for when you're filling your keg at one of the breweries on U-Flow's ever-growing list of fill-ups. What's more, U-Flow are also starting to speak to their existing breweries on their list as well as future ones regarding this filling setup with the hope that they'll opt in for this much easier and efficient way to fill your kegs. If you've seen my previous video on the U-Flow, you'll have seen just how good of an addition it is to your home brewing. Available in two 5 and 10 litre kegs, the 5 litre keg is perfect for decanting the 10 pints from a pint of brew. Stay tuned for this cracking bit of wizardry. First off, we have a massive thanks to give to Dave Robinson for this setup. Dave is a former Royal Engineer, thank you for your service sir, and went on to work in the car industry for 10 years. He knows a thing or two about a thing or two. As well as a U-Flow aficionado, he's also a beer nerd having his fair share of P1s and P2s, and he set about working out how to create this setup. Now, as I said, this is for the P2. As for the reasons that will become clear, it's nigh on impossible to get a similar setup to work with a tap of the P1. That's just a fact, sorry about that. So first and foremost, there's something you need to make sure is done before you even start brewing. And that is to make sure that you have enough length on your nozzle. No, I am not cracking that joke. By the way, it's kind of obvious, but what I'm advising you in this video is based on Dave's and my testing, and this is the best way we can work it. That said, any steps you take are obviously done at your own risk. Is that legal out of the way? Good. Now with the P2 tap, the majority of your brew, until you need to open it all the way and open up the baffles, will come out of this spout. Now, depending on the usage of yours, this nozzle or end of piping could be sitting inside or a little outside of the P2 tap. What you want is to have a portion of it sitting proud of the tap housing. And the way in which to do this before you start to even clean it out, or definitely before you actually start to brew, is that you have the tap all the way open, you take a pair of needle nose pliers, uh, or just thin pliers, and this is very gentle now, okay? You take these pliers and just pull it out just a little bit. There is a little bit of a play. Now, if we look here, as we pull back, that then pulls it in. So what you need to do, and it's probably not exactly easy to do it on camera, but you pull it back and then close it off. Okay, because what there is effectively is there a pinch halfway through. I'll talk about it a little bit later on, but there's a pinch here and that's how the tap works up to the 45 degree. So if we lock that down now, that still sits a little bit proud and that is absolutely key for this working. Now the reason for this is we're going to be placing a steel hose tail connector into this tubing with a beer line on the other end. This is to ensure that there's no oxygen introduced throughout this whole process. So with that brief introduction, let's get on with it. With a fully cleaned and sanitized U-Flow keg, I've poured out the majority of the sanitizer and left a little in the bottom and reattached the dispense head with the plastic piping to the bottom that reaches in the bottom of the U-Flow inside. The sanitizer left inside is to clean out the tap and the external beer line we're going to be using. Alternatively, Dave leaves the keg full of sanitizer and then forces out the whole of it with CO2, but clearly he's just made of money. So after priming with CO2, a good 10 seconds of pouring of the tap and then replace with the beer line with the hose tail connector already inside, leaving that run for the same amount of time. Just be aware that the beer line will start to run the moment you attach this onto the U-Flow. So doing it over a sink or over a bucket is best. At this stage, everything is sterilized that needs to be. So it's out with the rest of the sterilizer. I use the Milton Drops, by the way, link in the description, so easy. And we're on to the fun bit. Just as an aside, there will be a little of the sterilizer left in the spear inside, but unlike your traditional line cleaner, and you'll know if you've tasted any of that slimy stuff, the small amount of Milton that will come out with your first pour, it won't have any effect at all on your brew. Dispense head back on, and now with the U-Flow keg empty, we're going to prime this to 10 PSI. 
Well, first we're going to realize that the CO2 charger is empty, replace that, and then with a fresh charger attached, primed to 10 PSI. Now, of course, if you're like Moneybags Dave Robinson and you've done it the way that he does it, so leave it completely full and just force it all out with CO2, once it's empty, it will be filled with CO2, so you don't need to prime it again. But seriously, I have gone through so much CO2 in this testing. I'm so glad I get the VIP discount with Uflow. If you're not a VIP member, by the way, it's cheap as chips to join. And if you order a box of CO2 chargers alone, that's paid already pretty much for the membership. Again, link in the description for that. So the Uflow keg is now primed at 10 PSI. The reason why we're doing this is that we want to dispense this pint of brew under pressure. When we connect the two together, that pressure will drop in the Uflow keg as it shares it equally between the two vessels, the keg and the P2. Dave's engineering and brewing knowledge coming into play here very, very nicely indeed. Doing this whole thing under pressure means we're minimizing any frothing as the brew enters into the U-flow. Not just because it will go through the tubing inside and fill from the bottom up, but also because of that shared pressure between the two vessels. Now onto the decanting, and we want to attach the following in exactly this order. This is the outlet system and this will be attached to where your gas coupler is usually attached. Because at this point, we're filling rather than dispensing from the U-flow, we're reversing what the dispense head normally does. So rather than putting the gas in, we're attaching the out part of the process onto this post. On this setup, we have a flow stopper in line before we get to the spunding valve. Spunding, spunding valve, I don't know. Dave said it and he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. On that valve, we have a tap, which once everything is running, will be how we adjust the flow rate. Now, this is important. We want the flow rate to be low. Two reasons. We want the beer to travel slowly to help minimize any frothing of the beer as it arrives into the U-flow keg. And also, so we don't use up all of the CO2 on the transfer of the first few pints. This is one of the main reasons why Dave and I agreed that a flow stopper is a must. On average, the transfer of a full P2 brew to the U-flow can take 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want to be sat there waiting to close off the spunding valve at the right moment. And if you missed it, well, your brew would just continue out the way it's been traveling and we don't want any spilled brew here. So making sure the spunding valve, I know I'm just saying it all the time now, making sure the spunding valve is closed, we attach this setup to the gas post. If the valve was open at this stage, we just start releasing CO2 and we don't want it going that way just yet. Now onto the only really tricky point in this whole setup and that's attaching to the pinter. It bears repeating that you need to do this in precisely this order. The last thing to connect is the beer line to the U-flow. If we connected it at this point, again, we'd just be getting CO2 coming out the other end instead. Connecting this host tail connector is really quite simple, as long as you have some of the P2 nozzle sitting proud of the tap. As you can see here, having that little bit outside allows us to line up the connector before we fully commit to the opening of the tap. Then once inside the tap's hose, we can push up to get in that little bit more while the tap is still closed. As I said before, the P2 tap works with a little pinch about halfway up inside, which allows us somewhere to press against. Not too hard though. We don't want to be splitting any of this hose. That would just, uh, no, we don't want to be doing that. Then once at this point, we can unlock the tap and pull it forward to the 45 degree dispense point. We won't be taking it past this point at any stage through this dispense. If we did, a brew would be coming out all around here and we don't want that. With the tap open at 45 degrees, we push up again inside and with the gripping of the hose tail connector, we can pull back out of the P2 hose to give us again a bit more length to play with. It is a little bit of jiggery pokery, but as you can see, it can be done quite easily. So finally at this point, we connect the final piece, the beer line from the P2 to the U-flow keg. I just made sure the tap was at the proper 45 degree angle. And as you can see, we've already started to have movement in the beer line as the pressure is equalized between the U-flow 
and the pinter. Now, just open up the spunding valve and start the transfer. And pretty much straight away, you'll see your brew starting to flow into the U-flow. Don't forget, you only want a soft trickle of gas sound out of the spunding valve. We're not trying to get this through as quickly as possible. Doing that will get rid of all of the gas that has been used to equalize it far too quickly. At this point, I drop my keg onto the deck to give a little gravity assist in the transfer. And then, well, you just leave it. Leaving all the brew, transfer nice and calmly until you have it in your flow stopper at the other end. Now, what you don't do is in the excitement of everything going swimmingly, detach from the P2 first and then leave your brew come back out the way it just came. Idiot. What you should do is detach the beer line from the U-flow first. That's not going to pour out anywhere due to the nature of the design. Then you just move your now empty P2 over to the sink, remove the beer line from the tap and begin the cleaning. So that's it. P2 to U-flow brew transfer under pressure with absolutely no exposure to oxygen, ensuring it's as fresh in the U-flow as it was in the P2. U-flow are currently taking pre-orders, so make sure you check out the link right below. Massive thanks once again to Dave Robinson for developing this kit in partnership with U-flow. And again, thanks to U-flow for including us with the testing of this. So the P2 is now free. It's in a keg, so can be served straight away rather than waiting another couple of weeks if we'd have bottled it. So I better get another brew on. The beer featured in this video, by the way, is the brand new Copper Mill, and it's absolutely lovely. One thing to bear in mind, if you have brewed for whatever reason, uncarbonated, it's at this point when you've not added any oxygen in there, you've kept it completely beautifully sealed, you could then add CO2, more CO2, give it a shake, get it in a fridge, leave it for a few hours, take it out, add more CO2, give another shake. That's how you could add carbonation should you need at this point. It's just an idea. But with that said, that's everything in a nutshell. As I said before, links in the description for all the things I've talked about. It's lovely to be back. As always folks, my name's Adam. This is Musing of a Man. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate that. See you on the next one.